Interesting news out of the Justice Department. They have reversed a decade-old policy making some and actually most forms of online gambling illegal. Welcome news for states considering web gambling could generate a lot of revenue. And you know how states are kind of hard up right now. But some large companies in this industry say the Internet, it's just not suited for anything more than online poker. Who has, oh, this is so cute, the winning hand? Former federal prosecutor Doug Burns and criminal defense attorney Joey Jackson joining us now. Speaking of cute and oh so smart, guys, thanks for being <laughs> Thank here. You. Thank you, Jamie. You're sweet. Appreciate I, that. I'm not a gambler, personally. All I think of bookies, you know, in a room with 100 phone lines. But it, the Internet really has made a difference. But my question is, first for you, Doug, as a former federal prosecutor, who has jurisdiction over this? Was this a Justice Department question to begin? with and why or could the states do whatever they want this is actually pretty tricky Jamie um, under the Federal Wire Act of 1961 okay a federal law made it illegal to gamble online interstate but here's the interesting thing in sporting events or contests now the Justice Department said that that banned everything beyond sports but the logical sort of seventh grade grammar is sporting events or contests means related to sports the Fifth Circuit agreed with that, so the Justice Department was taking a much broader view, and they were prosecuting cases all over the country. To answer your specific question, which I wasn't avoiding, jurisdictionally, anything that involves interstate commerce um, is going to come within the purview of a federal law, and that's very, very easy to establish. It really doesn't have to involve more than one state. Telephone calls go state to state. Sure. So the point is, the federal government had jurisdiction to prohibit virtually all online uh, gambling except sports now they're reversing that okay so joey states want this like this could be a way for them to earn oh, some yeah. money that they desperately need but it, it has to be intrastate <clears throat> which seems to me very expensive to monitor right. to know whether or not the person going online is actually dealing with a gambling company online. Do you, do you see this as really working out or being a total mess? Well, you know what? It's a mess, Jamie, for a couple of reasons. First of all, Doug, that was some statutory construction. I haven't done it like that since law school. <laughs> Listen, on the you issue got of an A, though, I know. <laughs> Thank you. On the issue of whether it works out, it's a problem, and here's why. First of all, the Justice Department did indeed reverse the policy. However, it's still unclear. Why is it unclear, Jamie? Jamie. It's unclear for a couple of reasons. The first of which is the federal government, that is Congress, right? They can decide now to, to take any loophole in that law. Doug was talking to the, about the statutory construction and close it. And that would, in effect, end this thing uh, right. and make it crystal clear. The second thing is now what will happen is, is that from a policy interpretation and standpoint, there will indeed be litigation. The Fifth, the, the fifth Circuit Court of Appeals, it covers Louisiana, it covers Texas, it covers Mississippi. The feds are now in line that is the Justice Department with that ruling, if there's more litigation, then it could be overturned. So we're far from out of the water here, and I don't think the state should be getting overall giddy and decide, look, we're going to enact whatever we want with regard to gambling. So we have to hold the phone a little bit here. So, Doug, I, I'm so curious. Why do you think the Justice Department would reverse itself? It's a pretty big reversal. Well, it's interesting. The Office of Legal Counsel is probably the most academic division, maybe other than the Solicitor General's Office in DOJ. Antonin Scalia, William Rehnquist headed that division, Office of Legal Counsel. And I think, honestly, Jamie, they felt that the Fifth Circuit was probably right. Um, and the reality is, is that it was not a viable position anymore to say that sporting events or contests meant all gambling. If they wanted it to be that way, they would have written sporting events or sporting contests, okay? And I think that the Office of Legal Counsel agreed. Now, there may be some sort of backstory, other aspects, but that's my legal analysis. And the other quick thing, Jamie, also sure. is that there's an internet, there's actually a federal law which regulates right. internet gambling, yeah. the Unlawful Internet right. Gambling Act, and as a result of that, it's another reason for the states not right. so yes. soon. Yes. So uh, even if I was born a gambling man, you like that, right, Jamie? Uh, <laughs> I would, in effect, pause for the moment and see ultimately what happens here. What about those gamblers out there that say, you know, this is a bonanza for them. Now we're not limited to poker. We can do everything. Do you think that they would be willing maybe to pay a little extra since the states will probably put sales tax? Who knows what extra charges could come with this? Nothing's for nothing, right?
Joey? You know, Jamie, I think to your point, it's a great thing for states. In the event that it was interpreted properly and now states would be allowed to do what they have to do here, it's a, it's a bonanza because everyone now is looking for revenue. We're in tough economic times. So if you can have gambling, you can legalize it, you can get the revenue from it, you can tax it, it's a wonderful thing. Whether or not that sees itself to fruition, given the litigation that could potentially occur, given the lobbying, we have to also mention, Jamie, that Harry Reid was already contacted uh, by interest here to say, hey, take a look at this federal law again and see if the feds can't close the loophole here if Congress can't do its job. So we're not out of the woods yet on this. No, it's so interesting because when I first read the research on this, I thought to myself, my God, there are online gambling lobbyists. There must yeah. be. They, how hard did they have to work, do you think, Doug, on the on the Justice Department to get this, this reversal? And why do you think they did it? What's in the interest of the Justice Department? Are they pushing it to the states in terms of regulation yeah, and no. review? That's a phenomenal point you just made because this is all about lobbying, no question about it. I mean, think of all the competing interests. You have the interests of casinos. You have the interests of, you know, lottery games in different states. Um, so it's very, very complicated what the real backstory is and who really uh, wanted uh, to do it. But, Joey, at the end of the day, you got to know when to hold and when to fold them. <laughs> I knew you'd get me back, though. There you go. <laughs> I, I wonder, you know, there are gambling stocks, too. I mean, I wonder the yeah. impact of this. Do Absolutely, you think, yeah. Doug, that it will go beyond just the companies that are actually in this business right now? Because gambling stocks have always been an interesting investment, at least worth considering. Right. Well, I was discussing with Joey before we came on. I mean, traditionally, you had uh, offshore gambling sites, Costa Rica and others, and now it's going to come into the U.S., and I think there may very well be stock market activity and, you know, public offerings, new activity. I think you may be right. Sure. All right. Cha-ching, guys. <laughs> Joey, behave. <laughs> Don't care, be going Jamie. online just quite yet. That's what it sounds like to me. Right now. Yeah, he's going to start. Right? <laughs> hey, guys, thanks for coming in. Thank I know you. we saw each other yesterday, but it's great to see you again. Thank you so much. Always. And, you know, you know.